coming to you from Annapolis, Maryland, home of the U.S. Naval Academy, the sailing capital of the world, home of the world's largest crab feast, and four signers of the Declaration of Independence. This is the Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief, a daily roundup of local news that you can use, including local sports, local events, local opinion, and local weather from DMV Weather. Now, here's your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. Well, it is official. It's winter. At 1128 this morning, winter 2017-18 began. Hello, this is John Fernay, and welcome to your Eye on Annapolis Daily News Brief. It is Thursday, December 21st. By the way, four more shopping days. Yesterday, there was a little bit of a glitch in our episode. It did release, but it didn't go to some podcasting applications for some reason. Not sure why. So rather than crowding up your podcast timeline, if you're interested in listening to yesterday's episode, you can find it and all episodes at ionanapolis.net. There is a separate section just for podcasts, so you can always go back and see old ones there. Anne Arundel County Police Chief Tim Altamare is out of the hospital. In a bit of bad luck for the person that hit him in the car yesterday, (laughs) Anne Arundel County Police Chief Tim Altamare was taken to the hospital after being rear-ended in his police car at Route 665 and Solomon's Island Road right there by Harbor Center yesterday afternoon. Two people were transported to the hospital, minor injuries, and we understand that the chief is now out with a little bit of a sore back. A little bit lower than the back, maybe a little bit of a sore butt. Circuit Court Judge Mark Crooks is feeling the heat from the Maryland Democratic Party. They filed a complaint against the Circuit Court Judge for being photographed with Alabama Senate candidate Roy Moore at a September fundraiser in Severna Park. In the complaint, Democratic Party Chair Kathleen Matthews says that Crooks violated the Maryland Code of Judicial Conduct by attending the fundraiser and saying that the code states, quote, A judge who is not a candidate shall not engage in any partisan political activity, unquote. I'm not sure that that applies because Crooks is indeed a candidate for the 2018 election where he has to retain his seat. While Crooks runs without a party, he is a Republican and was appointed by Larry Hogan. The photos of Crooks first appeared on Pasadena photographer Laura Wegman's Facebook page, entitled Laura's Eyes Photography, and were republished by the Arundel Patriot, which appears to be dedicated to derailing any Republican in any race. Police have arrested two more men that they say took part in the gang killing of an Annapolis woman in June. Jorge Raul Guerra Castillo, 36, of Pensacola, Florida, and Dennis Rivas Aldana, 22, of Silver Spring, were charged on December 14th with helping to coordinate the killing of the 21-year-old Jenny Lopez. This brings the total charged in her murder to eight people, and prosecutors have alleged that the six that have already been charged are part of the MS-13 gang. Good news for Rudy. And you may be asking who Rudy is. Rudy is an Annapolis Fire Department K-9. He's an accelerant bomb-sniffing dog. Helps out all over the place. And he has a torn ACL. Surgery for that is about $4,000. And Chesapeake K-9, which is a nonprofit, set up a GoFundMe to try to get the money for it. They had raised a little bit of money before another company called Project Go, which is a nonprofit that funds orthopedic surgeries for injured service animals, stepped in and said they will cover the cost of the surgery as well as the physical therapy therapy for the dog. It's going to be about six months before Rudy is back in shape to work again, but that's good news for Rudy. But it does beg the question, and I know the Chesapeake canine fielded some nasty calls, but I do wonder when the city treats their canines, both police and fire, as officers and as employees, they have badges and everything else, why is there not a budget to handle surgeries for this. I understand that you can't get insurance, but you would think there would be a budget to put $4,000 in to repair Rudy's leg, especially when you consider the cost of replacing Rudy, should he die or retire, is about $12,000. If you're down for Midnight Madness or the 11th hour tonight, you may want to stop in the Market House because it may be the last time you get to see it for a while. Harvey Blonder, who is the operator of the majority of the stalls in the Market House, has said he is not interested in doing anything on a month-to-month basis with the city. He wants a long-term deal, and it will probably be closing down at midnight on December 31st. And this is something I had thought about a while ago. I said, Harvey is probably going to turn in the keys at midnight and say, hey, where do you want me to drop them off? 
to refresh, the city had a request for proposal that brought in four concepts. One withdrew. That was Giolitti's. The city then turned around and dismissed Chesapeake Brewing Company's proposal and went with Annapolis Oyster Company, which is Harvey Blonder's company, and New Market, which is the current mayor, Gavin Buckley's Partners Limited Liability Corporation that proposed two similar yet slightly different versions of how the market house should be. The city council initially planned to choose an operator by July 31st, but in typical city council fashion, they just voted to delay it. So now they are reaping what they have sown. But do get down tonight. It is the 11th hour. It is the third and final Midnight Madness. Stores will not be open until midnight, but they will be open till 11 p.m. And it's always a lot of fun. Parking is free at the bagged meters for up to three hours. You can park for free in the state parking garage. Plenty of good time. The stores will be open. They will have deals. They will have food. They will have wine. I'm going to be heading over to Paws Pet Boutique on State Circle. I need to get some more gifts for the animals in my life. I am certainly going to be stopping by Galway Bay to suck down some of their free Irish eggnog samples. And actually, I'll probably buy a bottle because that stuff is really good and a great gift if you're going someplace for Christmas. And just sort of an amusing aside, I heard a commercial on WRNR this morning for the Midnight Madness tonight. And one of the lines was, and make sure that you stroll the Francis Street Promenade. And I got to thinking, Francis Street, it has one business on it, Easy Street Gallery. And that's really kind of almost on Main Street. And actually, that's one of my favorite galleries in town. So if you are downtown tonight, go check out Easy Street. Lots of cool stuff. And stick around. We have George Young, who is going to give you the updated weather forecast for tonight at Midnight Madness, as well as a sneak peek at what you can expect on Christmas. Did you know that more than 1,200 mental health patients had to be transferred last year by AAMC to facilities outside our area because these facilities do not exist right here in our own area? Denim and Diamonds is a fabulous, fun evening under the stars to support expanding mental health care in our community. AAMC Foundation proudly thanks RXNT for their generous $50,000 exclusive presenting sponsorship. Get more info at AAMC denimanddiamonds.org This is Maryland. The weather can be nearly unpredictable. We've got George Young from DMV Weather in Annapolis to sort it all out. Hey everyone, this is George from DMV Weather with your Annapolis forecast for Thursday, December 21st. For today, we forecasted a target high temp of 41 degrees for downtown Annapolis and 42 degrees for BWI Airport with tons of sunshine and light winds before a very nice night out tonight with lows in the 30s for the last of the Midnight Madness shopping events in downtown Annapolis. We warm back up tomorrow into the 50s, and then we're looking at even warmer temps of upper 50s or lower 60s on Saturday, but that comes with a bunch of rain all day for Anne Arundel County. The good news is that Sunday is now looking like it'll be mostly rain-free, so the entire weekend won't be a washout, and then there's even the smallest of chances for some light snow very late Sunday night into Monday morning, which we'll continue to monitor closely. And looking ahead to next week, Christmas Day will be dry and cold, which we should generally expect to be the theme throughout at least Wednesday or Thursday with sunshine and highs only in the 30s. Okay, that's it for us today. Be sure to download our free weather app in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store by searching for DC MDVA Weather. And also follow us 24-7, 365 on our website at dmvweather.com or on social media via Twitter or Facebook. This is George Young of DMV Weather with your Annapolis forecast. Make it a great day, and remember, whatever the weather outside, have fun and be safe. When we started the Ion Annapolis Daily News Brief, we weren't really sure how it would be received. Well, it went better than expected, and currently we have about 11,000 people listening to the Daily News Brief every month. And we also got some feedback. And we will be making a significant change on January 1st. We heard you loud and clear that this needs to be done earlier in the day. So on January 1st, you will be able to get your daily news brief at 7 a.m. every Monday through Friday. And we still will have your local weather from DMV Weather and local sports by Kevin Chaney. So nothing else is changing except for the hour. And for those that are listening but have not yet subscribed, the easiest thing to do is to head over to Apple Podcasts, which used to be called iTunes, Google Play, or whatever app you use to listen to podcasts. Search for Ion Annapolis Daily News Brief and subscribe. It's free. There's no cost. And then you never need to worry about it again. Every morning at 7 a.m., it'll be on your phone, tablet, or computer just waiting for you. Hey, thank you for a great start, and here's to a fantastic 2018. 
Thanks for listening to the Ion Annapolis Daily News Brief. If you like what you heard, make sure to tell your friends and colleagues about it. And also tell them about our website, ionanapolis.net, where you can find much more. Be sure to check out our other weekly podcast, The Maryland Crabs. This podcast comes to you every Monday through Friday at noon. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you next time.